right. Hi, guys. Welcome back. This, I think, is going to be one of my favorite episodes, and we like to keep them short and sweet so that it maintains your interest and then you absorb everything we're saying. If you like this video, please share it, like it, comment, and don't forget to go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. I always put really educational stuff in there. Today's topic is the protein cycling diet. Dr. Lehman is probably cringing that I came up with this name, protein cycling. But I'm gonna to talk to you about some concepts. We are gonna to talk to you about some concepts that him and I have been talking about, I don't know, for decades, but really even more specifically uh, over the last weekend, yes, this is how we spend our time. Um, kind of nerdy, but it's okay. So one of the things that it's very important to consider is protein turnover. And protein turnover, Dr. Lehman will talk a little bit more about. But as it relates to metabolism, breakfast, when you are coming from an overnight fast, you are in a highly catabolic state, the body is primed. This meal, whenever that first meal of the day is, whether it's breakfast at 9 a.m. or your first meal at 11, the protein content has the biggest effect. And what I mean by that is your leucine, the leucine that you have from the meal, uh, affects mTOR, affects muscle protein synthesis, EIF4, these initiation factors. This is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. And not just as it relates to protein, but setting up your metabolism for the rest of the day. So I've always said that you need a minimum of 30 grams of protein at the first meal. I'm going to give you a more optimal number. And the more optimal number will be between 40 and 45 grams. So, and then Don, we can talk about the next meal, which we place at around 20. And then perhaps the meal after that, 45 to 50, maybe even 60 grams. And we can talk about the fact that at the first meal of the day, a lot of the data suggests that probably all the data is if that's right, that muscle protein synthesis really only lasts for about two, two and a half hours after that first meal. Yeah, right? so there's a lot of information that we've learned about distribution of protein in the last few years. And, you know, I think uh, probably the, the first thing to start with is that if you look in the literature, almost every single study that has ever, ever studied muscle protein turnover is done at the first meal of the day. And yet, if you look at Americans' eating patterns, they eat almost all their protein at the last meal of the day. <laughs> and like you said in your intro, the, what we know, and why do investigators do it at the first meal of the day? Is it because that's when they show up at work? No, it's because it's the most sensitive meal. Right. You know, you've been in an overnight fast, you've been without food probably for at least eight hours, and so you've now down-regulated all of the protein synthesis. We know you're in a catabolic state, mTOR is down-regulated, all the initiation factors are turned off, and so basically everything is slowed down in muscle. Other tissues like liver is running along perfectly yeah. normal, but Very muscle busy. is muscle is shut down because it's actually a sink for protein and it's it's supplying the amino acids that the liver has to have and so muscle's catabolic so that first meal of the day really sort of sets up your metabolism for the day so if you have a high carbohydrate zero protein breakfast you basically are going to stay catabolic just like you said for example so oatmeal so you people that are having oatmeal yeah. Uh, consider not putting that at the first meal, but perhaps even with the last meal of the day. Yeah, you know, it's a carbohydrate source. It's a perfectly good food, yep. but you still need protein. Uh, and so it may be part of the meal if you wanted to do it. Uh, you could add pro whey protein powder into your oatmeal if you want, but uh, you need to get that, you know, that amount to stimulate mTOR, and we now know that that stimulation is leucine. And we know the minimum amount of leucine is around two and a half grams. That's the minimum, you guys. And that's minimum. So the minimum we, is around the three optimum, grams. You know, three grams, three and a half, maybe what you need. Mm -hmm. And so how much protein should you take? Once again, two and a half grams of leucine, that means you need a minimum of around 30 
but we think that a more optimum number is probably in the upper, you know, mid 40s or something. So when you're coming out of that fast, you want a good anabolic response. And so that sort of sets up your first meal. Uh, and then we can, you know, go in and talk about other meals. But that first one, I think, is absolutely critical for protecting muscle mass. And if you're an athlete or an older adult, I think it becomes more important the farther, you know, the older you get. Totally agree. And it's interesting because it also doesn't matter if you're male or female. The right. dosing, the the dosing is what matters, not the size of your body, not your sex, right? So it's not dependent on blood volume. It's not dependent on anything other than the amino acid content to deal with this ancient machinery, uh, in yeah. particular stimulating mTOR and then subsequently muscle protein synthesis. So the there's some things, in, that, you know, there's some things in the literature trying to relate the meal to body size. I'm skeptical about that. I don't think. I think the data is extrapolated by the size of the people uh, that were in the studies. Uh, what we found is that when we used basically a 35 gram breakfast meal, the leucine amount in the blood, the concentration difference between a 140 pound woman and a 280 pound individual is about the same. And so we think it's more of a threshold amount as opposed to a direct relationship to body weight. But a lot of people would argue that, but I haven't seen data that convince me that I think it's an absolute amount, frankly. Well, I actually agree with you. <laughs> um, you know, and over the last 10 years of doing nutrition with individuals and medicine, I have absolutely seen by correcting that first meal you get a much better result in body composition and hunger and satiety and really their ability to manage blood sugar throughout the rest of the day. So you guys, we're gonna talk more about protein cycling, but I think it's really important to understand the first part of protein cycling is that first meal of the day. And we're not gonna be talking about protein cycling as it relates to weeks, but it's actually within days. So the the corrected protein amount within the day. So it's, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's gonna be very interesting um, to talk about what that actually looks like. So if you like this video, please like it, share it, comment if you've got specific questions. I'd love to hear it. And uh, thanks again for watching.